Broadly speaking, there are two types of listening, active and passive. Passive listening is the kind that does not require input from the listener. It's the kind of listening you engage in when you are listening to music, podcasts, audiobooks, or even this, for example. Active listening, on the other hand, is the kind of listening you engage in when you are with another person or people. You are not just receiving what they're saying, but also acknowledging your reception, processing it, and asking follow-up questions. Over the past couple of months, I went through a difficult period, and I realized that a lot of people don't quite know how to listen properly. It's true. Think of a conversation like playing table tennis, or volleyball, or since I'm in Malaysia, badminton. Basically, any game that involves sending a ball over a net to the other side. Most casual conversations are like exhibition games. The players are flexing their skills, hitting and smashing, and doing all sorts of stylish things. But at the end of the day, they're really there to have fun. A debate, on the other hand, is a kind of tournament. It's mostly about winning and each side is putting in their best foot forward and playing to come out on top. When in a conversation where you are primarily there to listen, your only job is to send the ball over the net to the other side so the other person can hit it in whatever way they like. So you don't send it back spinning, you don't send it back with a smash, and you definitely don't swing it back to the other side of the court and have the person run over in order to hit it. No. You send it back exactly where the person is standing and they get to decide if they want to have an aggressive game or just a chill, easy back and forth. A lot of advice on listening mentions how you should never insert yourself into the story or reference something that happened to you that was similar. But what my friend told me was that if I feel like telling someone about something from my own life, I can do that. But, and this is the important part, Immediately after I do, I must make it obvious that I'm not inverting any questions about my situation. And how I do that is to bring the conversation back to the person and ask them a follow-up question that they can then respond to that's unrelated to the thing I said. For example, if you tell me that you fell and broke your tooth, I can, if I want to, tell you about the time that I broke my tooth from a couple of years back. But I can't just say that I keep quiet. No, because you might then ask me how I broke my tooth and then I'll tell you and then you ask a follow-up question and all of a sudden, the conversation is about me. Instead, right after I tell you about my own tooth, I can immediately then ask how you're feeling and I can ask if you've gone to the dentist. That way, I've successfully sent the ball back over to your side of the court. Because when someone is going through a difficult time, processing that thing, whatever that thing is, is often incredibly taxing, both mentally and emotionally. And our job as listeners, as people holding space, is to not make them work any harder than they need to. We just have to keep them on track by asking them questions. Because whenever anyone tries to explain something to someone else, they also clarify it for themselves. And like Esther Perel often says, sometimes all you have to do to get someone to keep talking is simply say, Say more. Well. So that was a very basic primer on listening. I've made another video about how understanding Einstein's theory of relativity can help you become a better communicator. And you can watch that right after this. Meanwhile, let me know if you have any questions related to communication or relationships that you'd like me to make a video about. All the best, and I will see you in the next video.